think they're gone. <sighs> I think we managed to evade them. But there isn't any point hiding here. We have to get over this mountain to get away. Let's go as soon as we're ready, Chamomile. Hey everybody, it's Chunka Conroy. Welcome back to more Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Rescue Team DX. Last time, our journeys as fugitives began in the Lapis Cave, making it much further into the wilds, further than anyone had ever gone before. This time, this Kangaskhan statue looks a little suspect. We're now able to access our storage freely, and in fact, we were kinda sorta maybe a little bit able to do that before. Fierce Bandana, uh, power of moves increase. We've already used that. That was our help item before I switched over to the speed increase. The Kangaskhan statue that was in front of Lapis Cave was only visible in a cutscene, and yet it was there anyway. The reason for that is that if you die in these dungeons, there's nowhere to go home to. You will respawn out in front of these dungeons, and there has to be a Kangaskhan statue there in order to do so. Link box, maybe that, maybe one could come with us. Blast seeds are powerful and I should be using these in dangerous situations a lot more. I just haven't felt like I've overly needed to because I have so many options for healing. Uh, one apple can go away. Uh, we haven't had trouble with PP all that much. I've been finding max ethers as much as I've needed them. I think this looks pretty good. We got almost a full page of uh, free inventory slots. Willow, what do you have to say? We have to get over this mountain to get away. Let's go as soon as we're ready, Camomile. Same thing as before. Well, might as well climb. I'm ready. I hope you are. Mount Blaze or the Rock Path? Mount Blaze sounds kind of scary, so I think we should go to the Rock Path. This path is a five floor dungeon that includes previously seen Pokemon, as well as a great number of items. Here on just this first floor alone, there's five spots of pixeling up. We got a tiny Reviver Speed, some more Geo Pebbles, a little bit of money, I guess. 48's not bad. At least we're picking up off of the floor. At least for some change that someone dropped. And this is basically just a way of replenishing supplies. It's the replacement for freely grinding from doing jobs. They make sure that you're not totally screwed in these situations. Eat Norenberry right there, and you get the general gist of this. Also, I realize Charge Beam does have a use on our moveset. It's for cutting corners. Ah, poison! Let me see if I can trigger the poison here by just passing turns. Pidgeot! Pidgeot! Take my double slap, man. Is this gonna trigger anytime soon? I know I'm playing with fire, because this is a dangerous status. There it is! 40 damage taken from the poison! That can swiftly and suddenly finish off a Pokemon without any warning. It takes so many turns to go by that it's easy to forget that you're poisoned. Really, just get to the next floor. See what I mean by swift and sudden falls thanks to that? Yeah, it's pretty da it's pretty dangerous. But we got a deluxe box, so everything's good. Only other noteworthy thing about the rock path is that if you are to fail Lapis Cave, in addition to gaining access to the Kangaskhan statue, the rock path will be next to Lapis Cave as well to allow for training. After only four floors of this stuff, that's it. Deluxe box had a rainbow gummy inside. And we're on the run now, man. We can do gummies wherever we want. What? Isn't this where we started from? I guess that path we took just loops back to where it started. It looks like we have to go to the over Mount Blaze to move on. Chamomile, let's do our best. These are repeatable as many times as you wish. I like to think the Pokemon chasing after you also go down the rock path to follow you, not realizing that it's a big circle, and they just don't ever station anybody to stand guard at the front of the dungeon. Now, I don't feel like I needed that, but I still like playing it anyway, because it's a dungeon that, after we advance beyond this point, we're never allowed to play again for any reason. It's a little tiny dungeon that doesn't have much of note about it, but I just sort of feel wrong not going there and enjoying it while it lasts, you know? Ooh, it's one of those little things about the experience. Can't go back, won't let us. It would sooner let us touch our nose to this lava. So instead, yeah, I'm ready. Up Mount Blaze we go. 
Sounds very rough, but let's try our best. You always do, Willow. You always do. Mount Blaze is our first instance of lava. These are special tiles that fire types can traverse over, and not just them. Flying Pokemon and levitating Pokemon can as well, though depending on their types, they can also get burned from it. It's a little complicated. Maybe try it once when you know where the stairs are just to kind of see where you fit into it. It can be good, though if your partner is not able to also cross over them, they essentially get left behind and wander the floor not really sure what to do. And I gotta say, um, big complaint that I had with the original rescue team that I've been so happy to see is not a problem here. The AI for moving about the floors was god awful before, and it's not anymore. The AI is super good at pathing, which it needed to be if they were gonna allow you to amass angry mobs of eight Pokemon. Because it was hard enough getting just one Pokemon to follow you the way you wanted. Could you imagine eight of them just running all over the floor like Torchics with their heads cut off? It was so dumb. I didn't care for it at all. Thought it was such a silly problem that the game had. And I just kind of felt like that if it couldn't really handle doing that, then maybe they shouldn't have really tried having that many Pokemon in the party because you could have up to four. And they just made them feel like a liability because they'd get into fights without you around. The AI was rudimentary for what they would do in fights as well. And they just get themselves killed constantly. Every time I got separated with my partners, which was kind of often, I'll add. It felt like I could just tune out for the next five minutes because I knew it was just going to be me facepalming at everything they did while they ran around losing all my Reviver Seeds. Here we got some Slugmas. These can have Flame Body for their ability, and they can also poison using Smog. Pretty dangerous foes, where it can be uh, hard to do. Uh, no, we're not going to use that. I'm right near the stairs, and we've seen that it takes a lot of floors for that to actually take effect. Uh, this seems like a good opportunity to use Blizzard because we have several Pokemon in the same room, so you know what? Go for it. Even if it's resisted, why not? Ah! I made the Pokedex entry come true! Its body cooled and hardened, and now it's dead! Oh, no, it, it rose from the grave. Double blizzard with that speed. Beautiful win right there. We're gonna keep going on. And because I just gotta say it every time, hello, music. Enjoy this song. I've praised the soundtrack before, but if there's one thing that the composers of the Mystery Dungeon series excel in just so, so much, it's epic songs. There's songs that pop up in Mystery Dungeon that I think could very well be mistaken for a Final Fantasy or a Dragon Quest song. I mean that as a, as a very high compliment, too. It doesn't feel out of place. And it shows that you could have high stakes and tension in the world of Pokemon, tell an interesting story, and just really go nuts with it. It does this so well, and it's one of the things that I like the best about it. In fact, um... Another thing that I got to appreciate, Ninetales cursing people that touch its tails, that's been a thing since Pokemon Red and Blue. That's been in Pokedex entries. That's them taking something that has just been mundane flavor text all this time and telling a story with it. And it's not just for Ninetales either. They've been telling stories with things that have been known to be true from Pokedex entries all this time. I, I think that maybe back in the day when graphics were more limited, the idea was that the Pokedex entries would Tell us about it being sunny out. The sun blazes. Fire type moves are more powerful. Pokemon cannot be frozen. Water type moves will do less damage. This has other effects like the move Solar Beam being allowed to come out on turn one and not spend a turn charging up. And Pokemon with Chlorophyll are guaranteed to at least double attack. It can get pretty dangerous. But anyway, um, I kind of feel like they were intending for, due to graphics being more limited, using our imagination to fill it in. But then as the series got bigger and there were more and more Pokemon, it kind of became unfeasible for them to make all these changes come true in a meaningful way, especially on a gameplay level when you have Pokemon like Cubone that directly got contradicted by game mechanics that were later introduced like breeding. And that's what I like about Mystery Dungeon. It makes it come true, maybe not for all Pokemon, but it tells an interesting story with the details that it does go for. And that makes all these Pokemon feel a lot more special and unique. I always wanted to, you know, see that Charmander's tail could never really go out, otherwise something bad would happen to it. I always wanted to see the fact that apparently uh, Ivysaur starts out bipedal and then as the butt on its back gets larger and larger, it can't really stand on two legs anymore. So then it ends up getting stuck walking on all fours just before it evolves into Venusaur. 
I always wanted to see the fact that, um, let me think of some other examples. Uh, well, okay, I can tell you that I absolutely didn't want to see Drifloon's Pokedex entry coming true, but you get what I mean. There's some fascinating stuff in the Pokedex, and the fact that it actually gets expanded upon in a, sto in a meaningful story here. It's something that I wish other games would do as well. Uh, this Magby looks dead, like it just got all the walloping of its life. There we go. Double, double slap. Quadruple slap, maybe. Technically, it's a quintuple slap when it hits five times. I don't know why the move is the way it is, especially when double kick only hits two times. Um, we'll keep going this way. Uh, level up for Willow, soaking up all of that chlorophyll, I see. Don't need to give you any apples at all, because plants are able to make their own food by soaking up the sun. That's why your belly is still full and mine isn't, after all that we've done. Continuing on, I think a good point to talk about would be damage additives. I've mentioned before that same time attack bonus is the greatest damage additive, but I haven't talked about what they all are. So, same time attack bonus hits for 1.5 times what the normal damage is. That is not changed from how the main series handles it. What's different is that type effectiveness is 1.4 times rather than two times. A quad weakness would be roughly times two damage. Not very effective damage is a 0.7. Type immunity still exists, but this wasn't always the case. In most Mystery Dungeon installments, it's a point, it's a uh, point five damage multiplier, which I gotta say is kind of nice, but I guess they have to make it challenging somehow, and they've made other things more convenient, so I welcome it. It makes sense. It comes naturally to anybody who's played a lot. Hello, low resolution TM. That is a safeguard. That it, uh, it, that prevents us from getting status ailments, and I also believe having our stats lowered in this instance. Let me check. You and your teammates get the safeguard condition which prevent you from having bad statuses, so it doesn't affect lowered stat it doesn't prevent lowered stats, it just uh, is bad statuses. Uh Pijot Tossing a Rocky. Um if the enemy is weak to a same type attack bonus, still go for the type weakness, of course, because these damage additives do stack on top of one another. Um unfortunately for me, I don't get to really take advantage of having both of those damage buffs at the same time. It is the downside of playing a skitty. Several abilities like Levitate or Volt Absorb grant immunities without having to be a certain type. Thick Fat is a resistance to fire and ice, and this is actually a straight up .5, not a .7 like types are, so those that's a very good ability to have if you want to tank. And then um, for other damage additives, there's abilities like Overgrow, Torrent, and Blaze. Willow has Overgrow here, and that makes so that when HP is below 25%, it doubles the damage. It's not a 1.3 or a 1.5 like you're used to. It's a very strong damage additive and gets you out of some tight spots. Uh, for now, we're gonna chuck a rock at you. I probably should have done a Geo Pebble right there. I'm, I'm gonna admit it. I'm lazy about going into my inventory to use Geo Pebbles. <laughs> That's been the pro. Can we hit this thing one time? It would, oh, it was around a corner. That was my problem. That's why I wasn't able to hit you. Uh, would you just hit it? Is it that hard? It's a slug for God's sakes. Oh. Yeah, I'm using an orange berry on you because now I'm asleep. Willow, can you handle this? Man, I fed you something while I was asleep. That's gotta be it. No, I'm fine. Just hit the thing. Thank you. Great. We're getting outrun by a slug and now a tortoise. This is a sad day. Quick attack was upgraded. Cool. Well, this stunk. Flame. Oh my god. This is. Geo Pebble, please. Thank you! What even? There's an enemy over here. Um, I don't have any PP for Blizzard. I gotta do a Geo Pebble. Chuck ya. One of the most remote enemies in Mario that I wish would come back. Seriously, they brought back Spike from Mario 3. Why not Chuck ya? Geo Pebble again, please. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, sure, Willow can have an orange berry. She's earned it. She's been sticking by us. She's been doing good work. She's been pulling her weight a lot more than we have. That's for damn sure. Give me that double slap. Good. Why is a Torkoal part rock type? I always thought he should be, even when I was a kid. Heck, um, actually, 
Uh, on the note of Slugma and Torkoal, I don't know if I'm the only one who thought this, but the first time that I ever played Ruby and Sapphire, Torkoal is listed in the Pokedex immediately following Slugma and Macargo. I thought that it was an evolution of Macargo because it looked like a fire rock type to me, and I thought, oh, I get it. It's three, uh, three creatures that are known for being slow and made out of magma. So you have a slug that evolves into a snail that evolves into a tortoise, and, you know, they're mollusks. It makes sense. Oh. I hear a lot of people thinking that Alamomolo was an evolution of Love Disc, and I definitely see that one, and believe me, I've complained about it a whole ton. But that's one that I don't really hear all that much, and it's one that I legitimately thought for a little while as a kid. Geopebble! Using it so much, we might as well call this place Geo City, am I right? Thank you! Double charge beam, and with the buff the second time around. It's time I drank a Max Ether. Or two. The trouble from not having access to those moves has just been hurting too much lately. Speaking of hurting too much, this sunlight beating down on a burn must really be hurting you, Willow, which is why I'm going over here to see what these items are. Oh, a wand. Cool, a confused wand. Uh, Willow, let's let's save you before you... You got lava on either side of you with the sun beating down on you. Another good thing to be aware of besides not dying. You know what? Uh, Willow kind of has it rough in this dungeon. I want to have some ranged attacks, which is why I don't have any PP for Dragon Breath as soon as I switch over to you. Uh, sure, let's just do a take this, and then another one, and then a quick attack! You're not gonna get at me! Or maybe you are! Or maybe you're not! Or maybe you're frozen! Or maybe you're able to dodge while frozen! What kind of weak-ass shit is that? <laughs> okay, there that goes. Uh, got this. Uh, this is kind of dangerous. Uh, let's prevent multiple foes from- We have been cornered by tortoises! <laughs> How slow are these Pokemon that are chasing after us? <laughs> Actually, how slow are they? <laughs> ah, okay. Uh, something else, I guess, to make you aware of. Um, this, uh, I think you can understand now why I chose to uh, go the route that I did uh, with uh, getting that rank up. I know that some people might think that it was excessive how much I grinded up before going after... Um, uh, shift tree up at the top of Mount Thunder. There's the fact that Zapdos was a hard fight, and that was one reason, but the inventory space goes way up from that upgrade, and I was already feeling like we had no inventory space at all, so I wanted to make extra sure that we would get it in time for this to happen, as we're not able to go on rescue missions, not able to get upgrades. This got very bad in a handbasket. Thank you for going away, Arcanine. Good. Uh, oh, 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 okay. Uh, there, there was a reason why I, I switched over. Okay. Uh, we're gonna run away from this Fero like cowards because I don't want Willow to have to deal with more. Kangaskhan statue. Apples aren't gonna be that necessary because now that we're getting up toward the peak, just like with Mount Thunder, that's not gonna be all that useful. Safeguard can go. That's just taking up space. We don't need more than one link box. I had health orbs that whole time that I was burned. Still got two tiny reviver seeds. I think this looks pretty good. We can just expend items otherwise and make sure that we have room for anything that's really valuable. Mount Blaze Peak, floor 13. A Rossberry right away looks like a good thing to grab given what our track record has been like. Our PP is all restored, so Arcanine, step into, uh, into frame if you would be so kind so that I can breathe my own brand of fire on you. Can't resist these flames, they burn too hot for you. That's so cool that it's blue fire. I, I can't say enough good about it. Blizzard was upgraded. Accuracy of the move went up. Could not have asked for a better power up to happen. Anything that makes Blizzard stronger, so, so good. I'm also noticing that even though Graveler Rocks are registered right now, Blizzard is essentially a Graveler Rock, just ice type, and it hits all foes in the room. So Chamomile's AI is telling it that that's the best move to use in this situation, and I can kind of see it. Not very effective. White smoke prevents it from being lowered. Quick attack, maybe? Uh, I need to get back here. Let's let's switch places with Chamomile. Uh, no, 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 there it is walking on the lava there to attack both of us at one time. Sure, quick attack from a distance. Yeah, I know my HP is low. Uh, no, we're fine. Double slap it, please. Thank you. The fact that double slap can never miss just makes it so that there's no gambling in a lot of situations where there otherwise would be. And it's, it's nice to see that. What's not nice to see is getting all dizzy. I don't know if this just happens as you get older or maybe taller or whatever though, but I feel like getting dizzy was fun when I was a kid though, but now it just gives me this awful headache and I can't stand it. 
That's not double slap. I'm used to that being the double slap button. Use a cherry berry and willow, please. Can't risk this with a fire type in the room. Dragon breath, go. Good, okay. I gotta say, this is getting a little bit tough. I think I do have to use healing items at least every once in a while. Of course, it's always the very last room that you haven't checked. Uh, that's sunny. We'll shove you up. And then... Geo Pebble. Chuck that. And then a double slap. It's so cute imagining this skitty just getting up on two legs, having its two front leg, getting up on its two hind legs, having its two front legs just pow, 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 pow on somebody and actually beating these really tough, scary monsters in the process. It's a really adorable sight and I kind of wish the attack was uh, better animated because of that. Uh, oh, grimy food. That's certainly a new concept. Eating this will fill your belly a bit, but gives you a random bad status. Be warned. Not an ideal item, but 25 belly is still 25 belly. And these are right next to the edge of the floor. If you're ever gonna eat these, knock out all the enemies in the room, use it near the edge of the floor, and then heal off the status by going up the stairs. Is this it? Is this Mount Blaze's summit? Wow, this is incredible. I know it's a volcano, but the lava flow is much higher than normal. This might also have a link to the natural calamities. Ugh, it's like a furnace. I'm getting roasted. I don't want to spend any time in a place this dangerous. Let's get through this quick. Halt. Huh, what? It suddenly turned dark. I can hear the mountain screams. It is shrieking in pain. Someone is causing Mount Blaze to writhe in agony. Is it you? Huh? That's wrong, we're innocent. We were just passing through. The mountain's rage is my rage. I am Moltres, the warrior of fire am I. There is no forgiving those who befoul the mountain. On guard! <laughs> Moltres! Fire flying type got pressure for its ability. First of all in this fight, I can think of no better way to start than with the toolbox. Eye drop seed, I don't think I've gone over this yet. That's a cool looking item. Eating it gives you the eye drops conditions but enables you to see traps. The effect uh, lasts longer on the, uh, lasts as long as you're on the floor. It'll also cure the blinker status. That's a lower accuracy status. Uh, first of all, I gotta organize these items to make sure that I'm making the right decision. Second of all, sleepy seed, sleepy seed, go! Got it right in that tiny mouth. That's not an easy shot to make. Blizzard would do normal damage. Moltres isn't weak to that, so I think double slap's going to be the way to go. Oh, it's got agility. It's double speed. Thankfully that this isn't as powerful as one would think due to the whole movement speed versus attacking speed thing. I think for now, let's eat a blast seed. Do an easy 100 damage. Boom! I can breathe fire too. I just gotta eat something spicy in order to do it. There that is, doing a wing attack. Oh, that hurt quite a lot. Gonna go for a track to immobilize you further. It's infatuated, chance of moves uh, failing went up. Uh, chances of our moves failing happen as well. It was in love with me, so now I'm just gonna smack it silly, like the sun dare that I am. Uh, its attacks having greater range is based on its body size. So that was how uh, uh, Ember was able to hit both of us despite usually being a single time move. Uh, we'll cure Willow of the burn, why not? Fire spin, uh oh, that's bad because that hits for more damage on subsequent turns. Orenberry, eat it. 71. Dragon Breath. Still standing. This thing is a beast. Zapdos said it was holding back. If its power was comparable to this, then I guess it makes sense. There's that Ember again. Willow is down. Tiny Reviver Seed, you betcha. Double slap once more. Two, three, four. Four hits. Enemy defeated. <laughs> I'm not done. I'm not finished yet. Wait, please listen. We're not here to cause any trouble. 
we were chased to this mountain. And you should know, this mountain isn't the only place that's suffering. Natural calamities are happening in all sorts of places. We can't do anything. We're fugitives now. We want to help Pokemon in these times of natural disasters. Do you say that sincerely? It's true! Please believe me. If you think I'm lying, please look at my eyes. Fine. I trust that you aren't lying. Phew, my gosh. I thought my knees turned to jelly. You may pass. Get through Mount Blaze. And promise me this. Promise me that you will find the cause of the calamities that rack our world and stop the disasters from sowing more destruction and suffering. Okay, I promise. Of course, that's not possible right now, but as soon as we can! We're being chased, so we can't get on it right away, but we're a rescue team. We'll get to the bottom of what's causing the natural calamities. I promise. I will hold you to that promise. You've made me believe that you will honor it. As long as you do not forget the courage you showed in facing me. I was only preparing to take off. Oh, does it need to do that? Farewell! Ew. Ew, that was scary. But it's really great that Moltres understood us. Anyway, uh, we should get off Mount Blaze too. What's in the box? Bronze Dojo ticket. You're just making fun of me. Rainbow Gummy. <sighs> we walked a lot, didn't we? I'm tired. Let's get a little rest. The view is fantastic. Oh, look, Chamomile. Look, look over there. See how small Mount Blaze looks from here? We've come a really long way, haven't we? Um, Chamomile? Wasn't it hard getting over Mount Blaze? I doubt that many Pokemon would be able to get through it. And it wasn't easy coming this far after that mountain. Do you want to know what I think? Do you think maybe that no Pokemon will be able to get to us here? I'm worried about Alakazam. Oh, there are still Pokemon that could get to us? Well, who do you mean? Oh, I get it. There's Alakazam. You're right, Alakazam's team should be able to get here. Yep, we don't have a choice. We have to keep going. I think we need to go somewhere no one else can get to. Let's be positive and keep moving. Oh? What's wrong? Aren't we going, Chamomile? Pardon? Am I tired? They're trying to catch us. We don't have time to rest. And... Remember what I said? I said I would go with you, Chamomile. Oh, please don't look like that. Honest, I'm fine. Let's go, Chamomile. I'll always stick with you. <laughs> 